This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Question 9. Part D mentions final mode only for written. I can't believe it has final mode. I'm not worried about Part D. If you're worried about it, it's on the A, B, and C.
Uh, I shouldn't need to talk down all the figures. I really shouldn't. I'll leave it switched on. Uh, but just a couple of things. First, I hope everybody's happy with the basic layout. Because although you could lay it out differently, obviously you want to make it easy for the markers. So I hope everybody's clear. I was listing, uh, and always in the exam, I was listing um, the receipts, listing the payments, and then... It should be obvious what I'm doing here, keeping a balance month by month, all right? Um, here, I don't think it's particularly hard. I think the biggest problem is time pressure. The trouble is here you're relaxed. And, mm. <laughs> oh. uh, in the middle of an exam, obviously, there is that danger that, you know, everybody likes these because there's not much to learn. It was 10 marks, but the danger is... Half an hour later, you're still pretty busy because you're scared of going to the next bit. Um, it's got to be fast, and if you find yourself running out of time, whether it's easy or hard, you've got to leave it and do something for the other bits. All right? Uh, and now I put those red numbers there deliberately, and I beg you to listen because this has nothing to do with sort of technique. You can you can shout if you've lost a figure, but. I appreciate every single one is being marked separately. You know, it was one mark for that one, one mark for that one, and so on. And some of the marks here, you can write straight down. I mean, you can honestly get half the marks for this question in less than five minutes. You really can. Uh, and I always jump around. I wasn't being silly here, but I always do. I always set it up. You know, there's going to be receipts, I'll leave a big space. There's going to be payments, I'll leave a big space. You know, use a separate sheet of paper for every bit of the answer. So you can spread that out over a whole sheet of paper. Immediately, some of those are a joke. Um, you know, it's a bit about commission. There's quite a lot of reading there. It turned out not to be too hard. But I wouldn't have wasted a second reading that paragraph. Because when you go on to the second page... Fixed overheads, 4,300 a month, paid in the month. I mean, that was absolutely ridiculous. My sister could have got that. And it was one mark. I know it takes time to read everything, but it didn't take much time to find that. Um, the loan interest, a tiny bit of arithmetic, but really, they're paying this much interest, it's four times a year, and so on. That's it. Sorry, bro. <laughs> Broken the tooth off there. Um, and if anybody's lost a figure, you can ask me. But in principle, easy and a mark. John, yes. Like Sorry. Yes, I'm coming to that in a minute. No, no, no. I'm coming to that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All I'm saying is jump around. Everybody's different. But however fast you read, some bits obviously take a lot longer. That commission does. You're wasting time. There's more danger, obviously, of misreading and wasting marks that way. Um, it's your choice. 
But you've got to do something for every bit of this question. You've got to aim for half marks on each bit. It's astonishingly easy to get half marks on part A very quickly. You know, half of that section, sorry, five marks. Uh, because I thought, maybe you disagree, I thought that was easy, a mark. I thought the loan interest was easy. The tax was incredible. Those two together were a mark. He wasn't that generous. Uh, salaries. I know you're a bit more arithmetic. There were nine people paid this much and it's monthly. But it didn't take too long. That was a mark. Uh, variable. It, I'd left that till then. It took a bit of reading. But when I looked at it, it turned out to be very easy. It was half a percent and so on. Yep. That was a mark. Well, already, one, two, three, that's four marks. And there was a mark for this bit here. But the mark for the bit at the bottom didn't matter if you got your figures right or even if you hadn't finished it. Just the idea that you start with 40. Whatever's carried forward in January is brought forward in February and so on. You with me? So even if all your figures were wrong, or even if you'd just stopped in the middle because you got stuck, just setting that bit up was a mark, and that's got five marks, and it's not, it's not taking me five minutes to speak it, let alone to do it. Yeah. Um, sorry, I shut Zana up. She said about workings, what I would always do, again, it's up to you, but although I think the arithmetic here was pretty easy, uh, it, it's obviously very easy to misread when you're rushing and do something stupid. Uh, within reason, I always show the workings for one of them, just like I've done here, the blue figures. I would actually do that on... I would hand it in like that. Just then, if I had misread, I appreciate there's only one mark for each. If I've misread, hopefully I'll get half a mark if I'm obviously trying to do the right thing. If there were no workings at all and it was wrong, you obviously get zero, all right? Uh, I do that. When it's short workings, I would show it like that. Certainly don't show the workings for the others. You know, if I've got one right, he obviously any further mistake is obviously just arithmetic. It's half a mark. You know, it's not worth wasting time. Uh, the only bit that took time, and actually when he came to read it, I thought it was easy enough, were those commissions... You got 1% in the month and 2% the following month. If anybody's not sorted it, ask me, obviously. Uh, the reason I left it till the end is simply it took longer to read, I think, for everybody. And you never know till you do it. It could have been messier. Well, again, all right, it was three marks, but if I can get seven out of ten quickly, I'm quite happy. Linda, it's up to you. Uh, and again, Zana, I would show Wikisart, it said, and the fish on your calculator, one or two of you could do with new fingers. Sorry, that sounds rude. But you're recalculating every time. Use a bit of sense. When you've worked out your 1% commission for January 18, the other 2% comes the following month. I hope you, at least one of you was, recalculating. Surely if 1% is 18, 2% is 2 times 1%. I don't think you even needed a calculator if you've got 18 to put 36 the next month. Yeah. Could be efficient. Because if every aspect of cash budgets, I don't think it's ever been difficult ever. The problem has been speed and reading. You're bound to misread in the exam, you're bound to, even if you got this perfect. In the middle of an exam, one bit of that you have misread. Make sure you've got the easy marks. If you do suddenly get stuck on one bit for any reason, not here, but in the real exam, leave it, go on to the next bit. Do do each bit of an answer on a separate sheet. Do. If I found this was taking me too long, I would have stopped. Left blanks. You can, next page, you can carry on with part B, part C. If there's time at the end, you can come back and finish it. Yeah. But uh, each bit of an answer on a separate sheet, for heaven's sake. Uh, the written bits, again, I haven't given you long. Let's check you know what he was asking. B. B isn't technical. All of you, whether you've had time to look at it or not, read it with me. You're all working business in some form or another. 
This is just general business thinking. This isn't learning. Discuss the factors to be considered by Thorne when planning ways to invest any cash surplus. How many marks was it? Four? Five. You're trying to think of five points. But again, you, you want to aim for half marks on each section. As long as you can think of three points, you're passing it. And don't think technically. It is not technical. Whatever answer you got, he does end up with a cash surplus. It's irrelevant, part A. But what th factors might you consider if you're thinking what to do with that cash surplus? Anybody, anything. Actually, it was your business. You've got 28,000. What things would you consider if you're thinking of investing it? You'd consider a deposit account, but what factors would you consider? It doesn't say where would you think of putting it, you know? What factors would you consider? Say again. Uh, uh, yes, as long as you say why. And one important bit was how long were you going to invest it for? You know, it makes a big difference in the returns you'll get. Whether you're just going to invest it for a few weeks, or you're going, whether you're going to invest it for a few years. Would you agree? So that's something you consider, but what would come into it? What You all agree, if you invest it long term, you're likely to get a better return than if you invest it short term. Yeah? So why might you invest it short term? Why might you not want to invest it long term? What would you need to consider? Say again. Uh, all right, the risk. I mean, um, obviously, depending where you're investing it, how safe was it? There's something more obvious. Sorry? Oh, I think I know what you mean. Yeah, surely one of the first things you'd consider is when you're likely to need that money. You know, are you going to carry on getting a bigger and bigger and bigger surplus? Because if that was the case, you can invest it for a long time. Or is it likely that in April or May, for example, you might have another big payment? Because if you're likely to have to need that money in the next month or the month after or something, surely it would have to be invested short term. Would you agree? We have that huge tax payment. I'm guessing you wouldn't need another tax payment for another year, but there could be other big payments coming. Surely that's a fundamental thing. If you're going to need the money in the short term, you can only invest it in the short term. True? Would you agree? And it's right to mention risk in the short term. Certainly there's likely to be less risk. But clearly... Uh, especially if you needed the money in the short term, you'd want to make sure it was very safe, all right? Traditionally, a bank deposit, how safe that is at the moment, is another matter. But, um, hmm. but so that's a factor. Uh, do you need the money in the short term or the long term? Another factor, okay, how risky the various investments were that were available. A third factor, the most obvious of all, what about the rates of interest you could get, the returns? You'll take everything into account, but surely, subject to other things, the higher the return, the better. Would you agree? Leave us. It's too obvious. And what about this? Certainly, if I'm likely to need that money in the next one or two months, I think you'd agree. Uh, I'd want to invest it short term, put it on deposit or something, yeah? Mm -hmm. Suppose I told you that we're getting more and more cash, that we're not going to need it in the short term. You with me? You can afford to invest it long term. You know, you could invest it in shares or something if you thought it was safe. But what other obvious thing would the company consider if this money was available in the long term? Depends on the company, but most companies 
don't just, if they've got spare money, they don't just invest it in shares and things. What do they do if they've got more long-term money? Say that. Expand the company. Surely, if you had long-term surplus of 28,000, if it was getting bigger, would you not look to see, are there any ways we can expand the company, use it to buy more machines, that sort of thing? All right, not machines for this one, but, you know, we could have another office and... You take my point? I mean, I won't go on anymore, but there's a lot you could write there, and none of that is technical, surely. It is just general business awareness. And it's important and it's practical. None of you look as though you agree with me. It is. Uh, part C, I'm certainly not going to discuss, because there it is again. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of using overdraft finance when you're short of cash. Uh, part of it, yet again, is whether it's long-term need or short-term need. And the only extra bit, overdrafts are nice because they're very flexible, obviously. As you need more or less, it can go up and down. Do you agree? Long-term loans are rather fixed. The downside of overdrafts. Remember, legally, the bank can demand the money back instantly. There's more risk. And also, of course, a long-term loan, you can get fixed interest. Overdrafts are always fluctuating. There's always that risk interest rates go up. All right? 